Hello everybody. This is the very first episode on the lecture series on history of psychology and uh, it is brought to you under the segment of Manovigyan Varta. Uh, we will be doing many other episodes on the history of psychology and uh, this very first episode is based on the what, how and why of psychological history. Now, why this episode? There is not a lot more of content about the psychological history. Basically, when we study any subject, we are more interested into the major content which is directly applicable of that subject. And that's why we ignore the very important part of that subject is the history of the subject. And uh, whatever the reason, we may not like the history or the students feel uh, not very interested in the history of the subject they are studying but the history has its importance at, as it has gone through a lot uh, to come into its present state and that's why the historical background of any subject to, is able to provide us the deeper understanding perspective and viewpoint of the subject with which it was started and that's why if you are a beginner or a newcomer or a fresher student in the discipline of psychology it is very necessary that you must know the psychological history or the history of the psychology subject so I would um, I have made this video or I'm doing this lecture on this and uh, the attempt to make this video and to do this lecture is also accompanied with the objective of providing you as much as important information regarding the history of psychology I could in the most simple interesting and informative way also I would like to know your feedback over the video in the comment section and do hit the subscribe button if you like videos on lectures on such topics of psychology so without doing any further delay let's get started with the what how and why of psychological history so here we are what is psychology the very basic question we have is we must know before we are getting into the history of psychology that we should have a little understanding of psychology that is good for us because uh, even if you are trying to get into the history of some subject for the purpose of getting more and more understanding about that subject but you don't know a thing or two about that subject before getting it to its history you will not feel belong there belong to there so it is very necessary that we must know a little about the subject so what is psychology basically a definition of psychology could be understood with the objectives for its study right and why it is also important talking about the objective for the study of psychology is that that is what defines the term psychology if you dissect the word psychology into two parts psycho plus logy now logy means to study and psycho means mind but the meaning of psycho as mind was not in the very first days of the initiation of the psychology subject that was different if you go to search for the origin of the word psycho it comes from the latin word psyche and psyche means soul so in the very first psyche or the psycho gave the meaning or represent the meaning of the meaning as soul the study of soul and further it was with the advancements in the time till the present age got changed evolved and here we are defining psychology as the study of mind so that's why its objective is very important to understand the definition as well as to get ready to in enter into the history of the subject now if you want to understand the objectives for the study of psychology we go with the following major terms uh, following major objectives the first is to understand the biological correlates of the human behavior one thing we all 
get interested to study psychology or to know more about psychology it's because we want to know more and more about human behavior that's the thing we want to understand ourselves we want to have the ability to understand other people now when I ask in my class to the new students into the course of psychology in our university they used to answer me like that psychology with the help of psychology we can understand uh, what other people is doing in his mind or we can read the mind or we can read the body language now those pers those students as a layman represent the basic understanding of a common and normal people regarding the psychology that psychology is something which helps us to understand about in the deeper context behavior or help us to predict someone else intentions through its behavior so that's what psychology's major concern is also about that we want to understand more and more about human behavior so what we have is our body and the biological mechanism running inside our body so we want to correlate it with the human behavior that how it's affecting the human behavior or regulating or directing it the second thing is the unconscious motivation now the unconscious motivation could be understood with an example like uh, uh, you must have and we all have uh, experience at some point of your life that uh, we have done or behave in some peculiar way without being aware of the intention behind such behavior we feel amused by ourselves and could not justify even if asked that why we behaved in that manner or we reacted in that pattern this is because we don't know the actual cause but we feel that we have to do that and these are the invisible motivation motivational factors which are stored in our unconscious so we are not consciously aware of them but they are still regulating and directing our behavior or us to behave and that's why they are also one of the objective for the study of psychology to understand more and more about such motivating factors uh, the next one is the individual differences we all are unique from one another and that uniqueness is provided by our personality now personality if uh, you know or uh, to simply define it is the characteristic way of behaving in different settings so if there are four people in the room all the four people will have although with the similarities among their personality they will also have the differences will will mark which will mark the difference in the style of behaving for all their those four these differences in the personality are due to the individual differences which we all have and those individual differences make our personality unique and the uniqueness of uniqueness of our personality helps us to behave in a distinctive different manner from the others and that's why it is also an objective for the study of psychology and it is a very important objective for the study of psychology but whenever you want to study people their behavior behavioral patterns you must know the differences which are being made on the surfacial level to broad uh, to bring those uniqueness in the personality those differences coming up next are the objective Another objective to study psychology is to understand more and more about uh, mental health dimension and to perfect the therapeutic tools for the same. We have been always very much concerned about the mental health of ours and this is one of the major concern of psychology also that uh, the mental illness or disorder which we have to suffer from is a very complex kind of situation because uh, like unlike uh, physical problems or physical illness you cannot see or show what the person is going through so it becomes very complex to identify and characterize and categorize what sort of problem the person is facing or going through and that's why uh, the more and more study of uh, abnormal psychology regarding the mental disorders and the mental illness in the persons help 
more and more to develop much accurate much better therapy therapies and therapeutic tools to help or to deal with such sort of conditions and that's why it is an objective for the study in psychology to develop more and make them more advanced in dealing with various sorts of mental problems uh, the last one here is about the development and maturation of humans over age and its impact on the human behavior. Clearly we all know that the humans develop over the different age periods and with those developments the maturation in the mental ability and perception of the person with its perspective do come with the experience he has in all those years. This affects directly the way of behavior the way of behaving by the humans now when you are a child your needs your demands your style of behaving was totally different than the present you are and after 10 years you will not remain the same uh, of course you will have the similarities on your level uh, on certain levels but uh, your behavior or the understanding towards uh, the people or your way of interacting with the external environment will be changed a lot and this happens because of the developmental process and the maturation process we grow through we go through in all these years of different age periods and that's why it is very essential to understand that how it's it affects the human behavior and uh, how the basic principles of it can be deduced and can make the understanding of human behavior much deeper in sorting of uh, in sorting to predict more and more about it so these are these were the objectives for the study of psychology now interesting thing what is and what let us through the understanding of various objectives for the study of psychology towards the history of psychology is that these objectives were not being made as they are today or they were not all being made together at a one time or at the initiation at the initial time of the development of psychology they have been made over time by different persons being added by different ideologies or ideas and so on they represent a timeline of the period of development of psychology and why it is important to understand it is important to understand that psychology been growing since the day of its origin so to get into more and more understanding of how these objectives developed over time and uh, how the objectives of psychology changed what events or work of individuals let that change to occur it is very necessary to step down to its uh, historical background and to visit its antecedent factors and to understand more and more about how the psychology was to become what it is in the present times so let's move to the next part of this now the history of psychology the history of psychology this uh, topic has two terms the history and the psychology so first we will be talking about the history whenever we are writing some sort of history or we are trying to study the history uh, the vastness of the history or the past events of a particular for a particular field or subject leads us to the questions which has been asked in the lower part of the slide the first thing is the historiography now historiography is the study of the proper way to write history now it is very important to understand this sentence the proper way to write history and that's what leads to the next two questions also uh, why i'm talking about the proper way to write to history it is because the history is, uh, history is very vast everything which has been in the past is a history uh, the second you have moved to the next second as you are moving to the present your present marks every second left behind you as a history now if you look at back at your life and you want to write your history in the form of biography uh, in the form of autobiography or you look at your family clan and uh, you want to like the historical background of your family so every day past is a history for your family but you won't be able to include the details of every day your family has passed back in time so there must be some important events or where you want to begin from and all these things 
leads you to the study of the proper way to write history of whatever field or subject you want to write but it is very essential to understand or to make clear that what we want to study how much we want to study and where to get started and that leads to the next two questions for uh, the beginning of the history of psychology is the first thing is when did it started where should we begin from and the second thing thing is what to include uh, in the study of history of psychology so let's move on to answer these questions and to understand that how we can answer this when and what to answer the when is the western psychology particularly in terms of western psychology now why i'm using the term western psychology because the western system of psychology has been the dominating force towards the development or towards the present situation of the modern psychology which you see uh, the psychology which you study or which you see in application all over the world is basically the western system now why when i'm saying uh, the western system of psychology i must be having a second system with which i am differentiating hena and uh, i am differentiating between the two so uh, the second system of psychology is uh, particular and specific to every region uh, it comes under the category or it comes under the category of uh, indigenous psychology now indigenous psychology is a movement started because the western system of psychology as it dominates the world but uh, have its own biasness which we'll talk some other day in some other segment uh, but to understand it here when i say western system of psychology i must be clearly differentiating it from the indian system of psychology and because of the standard of uh, my own system of psychology as per my reason i differentiate it so the western system of psychology basically commences with the initial period of greek philosophers psychology originated from philosophy it's a fact psychology didn't originated at its own it was not self originated it originated it came out of the vast doctrine of philosophy so the greek philosophers were the very first who started to look on the behavioral questions uh, questions on the human behavior and what initiated psychology basically was the attempt of theirs to explain the human behavior that is that was what laid the foundation of uh, future research for more details or understanding in human behavior and that what led to the foundation of psychology as a discipline as an independent discipline out of philosophy so to answer when to begin the study of history of psychology is uh, dates back in the western system of psychology from uh, with greek philosophers now what to include into the content for the study of psychology so we have the paradigm the paradigm is uh, could be understood as a viewpoint the paradigms of presentism and historicism now presentism attempts to understand the past in terms of contemporary knowledge and standards that means if you want to study the past you have the standard of the present the standard of the present lets you know that what the subject or the field has achieved in these all times and what is standards it is being built up on and is standing in the present now with those things you compare it when it was started or when it started what you compare and what you view the present is provides the viewpoint or provides the perspective that the in the past the subject with its initial efforts to develop was developing towards the present towards the present position all were all of the efforts uh, being unknown the result being unknown to those persons in the past in the history but all of their efforts were leading it to the present standard and knowledge or the status the subject has so we look 
and correlate the both things that how the history in the history the subject moved towards the towards its present condition it may or may not be uh, totally competent to understand the initial perspective of the subject but it is one of the viewpoint one of the paradigm in understanding or studying the history now the second viewpoint is of historicism now historicism studies the past only for the sake of history it's like i am reading the book because i want to read now i want to read it doesn't concerns me what i am reading but i am just reading i am enjoying myself with reading i have nothing to do with how to correlate it with my uh, past knowledge or past readings but i am just reading to enjoy my time that's the historicism view it studies the history just to enjoy the history i want to study the history because i i have an interest in knowing how the people where in the past i am a retrospective person and i want to visit in the past now we because we are interested and uh, we have to remain in the present so we don't want to get lost in the history and of course to not get lost in the history it is very necessary that we must stick with our present we must live in the present and then visit the history it's like you are holding a rope into the present and next thing you are hanging in the history and understanding oh this was like the history okay now pull me up it's time for the next class so we are following the presentism approach we will be following the present tense approach so that we can understand the past in terms of the present we can understand that whatever the advancements or the position of the subject we have in the present time how it moved from the initiation of its in the past to the present time so we will be following the presentism approach now the presentism approach once we have cleared that our perspective in getting into the history will be that of presentism to understand the uh, present developments on the basis of the past efforts again there is being provided the approach of three types to choose the choice of approach these are the three choices we have to make the judgest the great person approach and the historical development approach now these approaches basically help us to include the content which we will want to study while studying the history of psychology with the presentism view right so when we will be trying to connect the past and the present we will be doing it with either one of these approaches or all of three now let me introduce you a little bit with these approaches the judgest approach basically says that uh, whatever the subject how uh, how uh, by whatever means is developed in the past it was affected basically it uh, it views the development of the subject in the past by the effect of other developing subjects around it so if if you want to study the psychology or the development of psychology in the history you will be studying the non psychological fields like that of science politics technological advancements economics all of those non psychological factors of other fields how they influence the development of the psychology in their contemporary times that's the judgest approach the second the great person approach is uh, quite simple uh, it speaks a lot for itself through its uh, through the term the great person approach enables us to understand that how the works of uh, prominent and pioneers during uh, in the history of the subject have to develop the subject to reach to its present condition so if we are talking about psychology we will be talking about the uh, Pluto, Aristotle, Descartes, Darwin, Freud, all these persons and these individuals jobs, their work, their researches, their ideologies, how it helped the psychology to evolve over the time to reach its present condition that is what the great person approach gives us offers us. Now the historical development approach is uh, a little bit changed but has some sort of similarities in regard to that whereas in great person approach we specifically focus ourselves on some few 
really important personals of the subject. The historical development approach gives a broader uh, scope of including those personals, those individuals and as well as those events which continuously change the idea, the basic concept of the subject over the time to reach its present position. So under the historical development approach, what we will be trying to do that we will be studying every individual who got into the psychology, stuck it and went away. Every event which happened around it, affected it, changed the viewpoints. So it's like getting much deeper, noting every details or major details not as keeping them under the influence of some few personalities but even the small persons or the person who could not be that much very popular in the history but could have done much incredible to add to the development of psychology so that's the historical development approach so uh, now we must uh, you must be confused that what approach what choice of approach we will be following in the history of psychology to reduce the tension and the stress uh, regarding the uh, conflict of uh, choice will be including all the three and we'll be using the appropriate one whenever will be required so let's move on now the question which must have been revolving around your mind popping here and there jumping here and there in your mind before clicking on this video that why to study history of psychology what, what what's the need to history of psychology should I get to study the history of psychology and then the pressure of doing good in academics or the pressure of understanding is to get relatively good grades because uh, you are a very brave person and a courageous one I can tell you even I'm not seeing you and you are not able to see me as well because you have finally got on the YouTube with the intention of knowing the history of psychology in a more better way and I hope that you are not regretting your idea and of course you are not because 28 minutes have already been passed and still you are here so congratulate on that so why study history of psychology let me give you some more important and uh, uh, motivating and uh, moralizing uh, reasons for that first is the perspective you want to build your perspective you want to make your perspective more broad in the sense uh, as a student or a scholar in the field of psychology so you want to see the things in much deeper way and for that you must be having a perspective similar to the perspective of those personnel in the psychology in the history of psychology who have started it or who have thought of it so you get experienced you get more knowledge about what the psychology initially meant and what were the objectives with that you get into the era of where it's all beginning so you feel quite different from the others who don't get that perspective you you develop a greater understanding of your objectives and your motives of your goals and that's why you visit the history of psychology another thing is deeper understanding of course when you get a deeper perspective you have a broader perspective you develop your understanding deeper than the others who don't have like that so basically but it is also an independent uh, objective of studying the history of psychology that you want a deeper understanding over the subject and of course it is correlated with the development of the perspective the next thing is recognition of fates and fashion whenever you are in the field of any subject and in this particular case the psychology you would like to know that how an idea became uh, becomes famous and how it gets faded away in the field of psychology so if you visit the history and you see there were many ideas various ideas numerous ideas uncountable number of them out of which some not having that much potential or not having that much uh, ability to add to the development of psychology much but still got famous enough for a long period of time until somebody came and discarded 
and there were ideas obviously which were very good have very potential but didn't got the recognition now uh, for example it's the similarly as you visit the youtube you search for things and some times you get encounter with any video which you see the content is very good but why it is not trending why it is not being on the top of the list of the search to recognize these fates and fashion that what makes an idea popular what makes an idea got the recognition on a larger level and what makes an idea even though very much potential and have a great ability to influence or to contribute to the development of the subject but it still not gets that much of recognition so to understand these fates and passion you have to and you visit the history of psychology other thing is avoiding repetition of mistakes you don't want to do the mistakes as a scholar or as a personal working in the field of psychology if you want to do some sort of research you want to do some sort of findings in the psychology you must be knowing that what sort of research you must avoid so to understand it or to learn it there are two ways one first way you go all along the way the second option is visit the history study it learn the people how they did what they avoid and what they learn from their mistakes learn from their mistakes start ahead with a lot of time a lot of years of your life in the field of psychology and that's why you must study history of psychology i'm not trying to make you afraid of right i'm just giving you some valuable ideas on history of psychology now the other thing is the source of valuable ideas history is infinite history is vast every second which has passed away is a history that's a quite a perspective so when you visit the history of psychology you meet the great personalities their uh, life style their life reviews how they lived brief life uh, life abouts of the great personalities of the psychology and uh, how they got started how they got interested how they, what motivated them all these sort of things helps you to prepare yourself in the field of psychology so you get a lot of valuable ideas a lot of valuable ideas because uh, most of the time you will see that in the psychology in the beginning of the psychology there were no psychologist even the term psychology came very late after uh, the experimentalist they were just studying the mind their consciousness the experimentalist the wilhelm wundt the lab in the lab of wilhelm wundt uh, there was not going on a party the party was about the psychology and they were all celebrating the experimental method which they have induced in the field of psychology because all thought that psychology is a subjective uh, has the characteristic of subjectivity so the scientific methods are not going to prove themselves very much beneficial here or we cannot bring it to the platform but still the wilhelm wundt made it in some sort of some sort of way uh, through the method of introspection to get a scientific inquiry level of eligibility to the psychology and that's what was called experimental psychology wilhelm wundt the big daddy of experimental psychology i mean to say the father of experimental psychology so a source of valuable ideas history is always to you as a young sapling and that what the wilhelm wundt would have seen you at I would have described about you seeing you this video and the final is the curiosity the curiosity you you are all very curious to know more and more about psychology you feel like wow i am going to be a psychologist now people see you with a lot of respect and uh, kind of afraid of you too and it feels good that you can read the mind of people they they feel that uh, being a psychologist you can read mind of anyone so the kind of respect or the attention you get at uh, your identity of uh, of as a psychology student or personal of course makes you feel good so it is very general being the fresher in the field of psychology or an or a student in the field of psychology that you get yourself interested in knowing more and more about the psychology you want to know more and more about the uh, discipline you have initiated into and that curiosity is very good why i'll give you an example for that 
if you are a member of a family being a member of the family you are associated with many sort of associations to the family you are associated emotionally mentally socially uh, you have your identity with the association with that family so all these association and basically the emotional association and the association which helps you to build up your identity on the basis of the family popularity or the family dignity helps uh, makes you curious about knowing more and more about your family so you want to visit and revisit the past with your grandparents with your parents or with your great grandparents if uh, they are still there for you and you want to know more and more about your family how it began what the journey they had and all those sort of things that's why why it is that curiosity is because you are a member of family and you want to know more and more about your roots about the clan you belong with so in the similar fashion being the student of psychology you want to know more and more about the psychology about those personals about the achievements your discipline had all these in all these years and it's the way it's adding so whenever you feel uh, you meet someone who ask about what you are doing your about your career about your education or about the purpose uh, of your education you could be proudly tell them about uh, you could probably tell them about uh, your field and the achievements and the gravity and the importance of your field in today's world and that's curiosity is very necessary and very good so let's move on to the famous conflicting relationship of the psychology and the science the psych and science relationship in the past in the history at the beginning of the psychology the scientists or the personals who were doing the scientific research and inquiries never agreed and so was the case with the personals of psychology field of psychology also they all never agreed to bring psychology in the field of science or to accept psychology as a scientific subject or as psychological sciences psychological science so the reason was that the identity psychology has of its origin psychology was originated from philosophy and philosophy basically worked through the process of thinking the philosophers were thinking all the time sitting and thinking about the questions of life and uh, perspective of life and out of that came the concern of human behavior questions regarding the human behavior nature of human behavior understanding of human behavior and as the people's interest grew in that because at that time the behavior which was not according to the social norms or in uh, uh, line with the uh, normal behavior the society has or uh, the society has accepted was considered not abnormal but uh, a spirit problem the people used to believe that there are some ghost or some spirits living inside the person which are making a, him behave in this particularly abnormal manner but there were also people who were concerned about that and that's why they want to understand more and more human behavior that they knew that these are not the work of some spirit or ghost or such things supernatural forces but uh, it is something which is happening inside somewhere either in the body or in the much higher realm than the body so to understand that science was developing at that time too and uh, the observation and the inquiry method the science was developing uh, was being uh, proving itself very beneficial in sort of investigation procedures so the personals of the psychology wanted to bring it into the scientific platform to have a systematic study of the psychology and related topics but there was a conflicting relation based on that because science walked over the lane of objectivity science always watched always looked for two characteristics objectivity and the ability to measure 
the measurement characteristic and if two the of these things were not present in the subject it was not considered qualified for the scientific inquiry so psychology being a lot full of subjectivity being a being the descendant of uh, philosophy had a conflicting really uh, had a conflicting time to getting into the scientific platform now to understand it let's get briefly into what it science how it works and uh, then we'll get to the term which will help us to correlate between the science and the psychology the science could be understood as a way of answering question about nature by directly examining it it has two major components of empirical observation empirical observation anything which you can quantify you can bring down in statistical data in the numbers and facts the second component is that of theory right so the two major components the empirical observation the ability to quantify any observation into the statistical data and the theory that is the explanation of that observation and uh, checking out for any relationship between the events to give a theory to give a statement regarding that now how it work first thing the organization or categorizing observations the organizing or categorizing observation was uh, done after observing an event happening in the uh, natural settings and uh, getting a lot of observation is what the scientific inquiry do in its uh, very basic procedure and after getting all those sort of observations you get a lot of observation over a natural phenomena happening in the setting and when you get those observations you categorize it on the basis of the similarities and differences it has with the other observations once you categorize it then the work is done to the next thing is to explain or to attempt to explain what you have observed and that is what gives the empirical observation the statistical data and further in the final steps of its the procedure that is what formulates a theory now the objectives of scientific inquiry there are two objectives basically first is to discover lawful relationship which is called a scientific law a scientific law is uh, something uh, it can be described as a consistent relationship between two or more empirical events empirical empirical events that means which can be observed and quantified and the consistent relationship between the two and uh, when there is a consistent relationship which you can see any time anywhere and can be seen by anyone science goes down to the common people science have no secrets to keep every law every principle of science can is such which can be verified by any person so if you have such type of consistent relationship between any two or more than two empirical events that would form a scientific law that would be called a scientific law now these scientific laws are of two types first one is the correlational law and the second one is the causal law the correlational law attempts to describe the relationship in terms of uh, the togetherness of two events that how one event is uh, varying with regard to the other event and how the two events correlated together it helps to predict that uh, if one thing is happening other thing is going to happen soon in certain amount of time for example if uh, you correlate between the creativity and intelligence so we can say that any person who is having creative mind must be having some sort of intelligence so it is a kind of correlational relationship the causal law basically describes the cause of happening of any thing which you are absorbing observing so anything which you are observing or you want to explain the causal law really the causal law is the reason of that thing which you are observing uh, what is happening behind it how it is happening the reason behind the happening of that thing under your observation is what the causal law is now the second objective is to discover the causes of natural phenomena 
Science works in the natural settings. It uh, is very keen in observing the natural phenomena and a phenomena is something which will happen, which was happening before you came on this planet and which will keep happening in several years after you and several generations of yours which is a constant thing which is constantly happening so such kind of things uh, the scientific inquiry is interested in uh, finding out the causes of natural phenomena now this causal law leads us to the philosophical doctrine of determinism now determinism is a very important thing when you are uh, looking or you are searching for the cause of the happening of any certain observation any certain phenomena or thing under your observation that leads us to the philosophical doctrine of determinism now what determinism is it is the assumption that what is being studied can be understood in the terms of causal laws and you know what causal law is i told you a few seconds ago that whatever the thing is happening has a reason behind it and so the determinism say uh, says or uh, assumes that whatever is being studied the subject of our study has a cause and we can study it the determinist viewpoint says that uh, if the cause behind an event can be known the event could be predicted with complete accuracy if you if you certainly for certain you know that what is making this event to happen you can predict that in such settings this condition will occur and that will help you to control the situation and that's also a difference between the correlational law and causal law the correlational law helps you only to predict based on the relationship between the two events whereas the causal law helps you to predict as well as helps you to control based on that reason you know that this thing happens because of this now the psychology and sciences this determinist viewpoint this determinism was added into the psychology to understand the human behavior to understand the various psychological processes or various psychological phenomena so the scientific method started uh, getting used by the psychologist or the time of uh, at that time the personals enthusiast in the psychology and first was the wilhelm wundt to introduce in the form of experimental psychology in leipzig university and uh, they were called the experimentalist psychologists then came the neuropsychologist who worked with the biological correlates of the human behavior of uh, the workings of and the effect of nervous system neurons neurotransmitters over the human behavior they try to understand it in that way on uh, they try to understand the proceedings of mind and behavior with the workings of brain then came the psychologist who were working with evolutionary biologist and geneticist and uh, they were the one who get into the developmental psychology that how over the time humans evolved and so evolved their social settings and uh, social behavior and behavior in general and the genetist who worked over that how the inheritance influences or affects the uh, behavior of the persons so the genetics were basically how your how the genes of your parents the genes running in your family gets into it and affects your behavior and what is the role of them in making up your personality so this was the relationship the psychology and science established over time and since then psychology is being advancing now the topic of determinism indeterminism and non determinism so uh, as the psychology came under the platform of scientific inquiry it uh, adopted the method of uh, investigation which was being practiced under the in the scientific platform in the scientific domain under the scientific domain so uh, basically as we already talked about the causal law uh, we happen uh, we believe the causal law is that everything which is happening has a reason behind it so the human behavior which was happening and uh, 
regarding which the psychology field of psychology wanted to do investigation to understand more and more its nature and uh, its working so the three domains of determinism indeterminism and non determinism are basically tell uh, are basically the approaches the personals the researchers in the field of psychology adopted to reason about the human behavior so first determinism as the determinist uh, determinist viewpoint always searched for the causes to more accurately predict and be able to control the event happening so the human behavior was uh, certainly categorized under the following factors to be as the cause of its happening first was the biological determinants under which the biological correlates of human behavior which i have already talked about came then we are the environmental determinism the factors uh, the things around the person which were affecting uh, the person like the environment the climatic changes the other conditions around the geographical area and uh, the several other factors which were the part of the environment and were affecting the person were also marked as a factor affecting or uh, impacting the human behavior then came the socio cultural determinism that means the upbringings the values the belief systems which were practiced in the society the person residing uh, in and the cultural values and norms which uh, he grew up with all formed uh, the the uh, the base of the understanding the person acquires over the time and uh, the behavior was uh, viewed directly related to that and all those factors were considered to be the components affecting the behavior or motivating or directing the behavior in a particular manner then came the uh, physical and psychical determinism the viewpoint of physical and psychical determinism pointed out towards two things the physical included the environmental and socio cultural factors all together including the genes and the biological factors as well in the in the uh, in the explanation of human behavior while as the psychical determinism included the factors regarding with the cognitive and mental abilities of the person uh they could be innate they could be acquired but overall they were all the faculties of the mind and they were being considered for the cause of the human behavior or the cause of uh, or the reason behind the particular pattern of human behavior differentiating it with other persons so then came the indeterminism uh, viewpoint uh, which uh, stated that uh, however there were specific causes for human behavior to happen but still the cause of behavior cannot be accurately measured they strongly believed that there could be certain factors affecting the human behavior which could be known as well but there could not be by any way you can know all those causes or all those factors which were responsible for the happening of the human behavior with this view point they strongly uh, put forward the opinion of that there was not a single cause behind the human behavior and there were several other factors affecting the human behavior to make it happen then came the non determinist view point uh, under the non determinism which stated that uh, science as a way of studying humans is completely out of question they completely rejected it and they believed that the most important cause of behavior to happen is self generated they were the group of the psychologists who believed in free will behind the cause of behavior and so they stated that you cannot ever find the cause of human behavior through the way of scientific research so they completely rejected it and uh, the non determinism so established then another thing which we find in the history of psychology which is a very important thing as well are the persistent questions which are being observed and tried to answered all over from the beginning to the till point 
these questions many of them have been the cause of the initiation of uh, psychology as a discipline they established the psychology they still they were present before the establishment of the psychology as the curiosity of uh, human mind they remained same after the establishment of the psychology and they still hit us with their question marks even at this point of psychology where psychology has been to its most advanced stage so what are these questions and uh, which has which has taken such an important role uh, such an important part in the historical background of psychology let's get through them first is the what is the nature of human nature human nature what it is like because human behavior is considered to be a part of human nature and human nature is basically that ground on which the human behavior happens so the basic question the very basic question was to understand the nature of human nature what it is like how it happens how it is formed how it influences so this questions remains as it is uh, we still are trying to answer this questions and every advancement every research uh, development which has been made in psychology is thought is uh, seems is is thought to be moving toward it the second question uh, which uh, which we can find in all of the historical timeline of psychology is how are mind and body related now this mind and body problem has been tried to answer many a times and uh, in answering this mind and body problem uh, there have been several opinions several established ideologies uh, which has tried to answer the problem of mind and body and the relation between it now some has where thought mind and body as uh, two different entities uh, on the same hand you will find a group of a well established group of psychologists who totally refuse the 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 entity of mind who totally refuse the existence of mind as a separate entity they only consider biology and uh, behavior which is observable and uh, obviously they are following the the scientific approach of uh, studying the psychology but uh, they could not be completely be said to be corrected with that then uh, the opinions which established over the question over answering the question of mind and body relation were in the form of the ideologies of materialists then the monist they attempted to explain everything in terms of one type of reality that is matter then other came who were the idealist and they they were the one who attempt to explain everything in the terms of consciousness and then came the viewpoint of dualist who believes that there are physical events and mental events and uh, uh, they assume that both physical and mental realm exist together so uh, this type of uh, attempts these type of ideologies were established over the question of mind body relationship then came another question or uh, topic of debate over nativism and uh, empiricism uh, whereas the net uh, nativist emphasizes over the role of inheritance in the explanation of origin of human attributes empiricist were emphasizing over the role of experience the nativist were of the belief that uh, the human behavior good bad whatsoever is uh, is because of the instinctive nature and uh, the empiricist were that uh, were with the viewpoint that uh, the way the humans are in behaving or in reacting with the in uh, external environment is because of their experiences they have gained over time then uh, another topic uh, which is uh, quite a debatable topic over and is found to be existing since the history since the beginning of psychology is over the mechanism versus vitalism the mechanism tried 
to understand and explain behavior of all organism including humans in the same way that uh, you can explain the behavior of a machine so they explain it in terms of parts and laws governing those parts they try to explain the human behavior in the same manner whereas uh, when we talk about the vitalism so the vitalism has the viewpoint that life can never be completely reduced to material things and mechanical laws life is something different very different from the machines and uh, the biggest difference which uh, differentiate between the machines and the living things is that living things contain a vital force that do not exist in inanimate objects so this remain a topic of debate so far in explaining the understanding and working of the humans then came other question which is still in progress of uh, answering how are humans related to non human animals now this question is based on whether humans are quantitatively or qualitatively different from other animals uh, if you know about the school of behaviorism which was uh, started by john b watson and uh, his experiments and uh, similarly the ancestors of uh, the behaviorist school so like uh, thondike and his famous experiment uh, with the box and a cat and then bf skinner's experiment with a skinner box so these experiments used animals to understand the behavior in certain settings and those laws those relationships which they found during their experiment were used to deduce the working of human behavior or how the behavior is learned or is done so that gave an idea that uh, can non human experiments or the animal research can be used to maintain and establish the principles of behavior for both humans and non humans the opposite to it are the other extremists who believes that a humanist and existentialist uh, they are the humanist and existentialist who believe that humans are qualitatively different from other animals and therefore nothing important about humans can be learned by studying non human animals so still it remains a question of debate then comes so what is the origin of human knowledge now the study of knowledge is called epistemology now psychology has always been involved in concern of determining how humans gain information about themselves and their world so this uh, question however been tried to answer several times but still not been able to go far with an certain accuracy where it could be accepted without any controversy then came another topic about objectivity and subjectivity the objective and subjective reality now the subjective reality now as i have told and talked about it earlier also that uh, the psychology born out of philosophy has the characteristic of subjectivity and the science runs over the quality of characteristic of objectivity in its subject so here comes the debate here comes the question which arises uh, that the difference between what is really physically present which comes under the physical or objective reality and what we actually experience mentally that is the subjective or phenomenal reality does it has a relationship now we accept it that both exist we accept it that both exist the physical reality is the one which we experience daily but what we experience in the presence of physical objects is the our subjective reality so given the fact that there is a physical world and a psychological for world the question which arises under this topic is how are the two related and it remains the question of uh, psychological concern and a persistent question in psychology as well now the last and very specific which has been persisting Uh, throughout the psychological history is uh, that of problem of self 
uh, it has been majorly tried to answer and uh, basically the self you would get introduced with it in the segment of personality and personality theories the personality theorists were very much concerned while describing the personality and the personality as the cause of human behavior to happen about the concept of self now interesting thing which makes the uh, makes this topic to arise a number of question and persistent questions in psychology is that uh, the way we experience our self is totally different than we experience anything else now first thing that we experience our self as a thing our self and body as two different things that that is how when we describe ourselves uh, this is this is me my body is so beautiful so when we are saying about my body is so beautiful it is similar as one can say my bike is very high performing or my car is very expensive and luxurious so we are basically showing that we possess this thing so the body is not we so there is something different who is regarding the body as something under its possession and that is the self and so when we perceive ourselves we perceive ourselves as the same person from movement to movement from day to day and from year to year even from little about us remains the same uh, look as a child if you perceive yourself as a child you continue to perceive yourself in your young adulthood in your present stage as same however you have been changed completely but you do not feel any difference in yourself and that is the link between the self as confusing it looks so important it becomes as the question as the problem of the self so the self has been the has been regarded as the most proposed organizer of experience and it is because it has been regarded that self having a separate existence of its own it still functions as an organizer and the unity and continuity with the self is what makes it a very prominent topic of discussion under the psychological studies so that was all for today under the first episode of lectures on history of psychology i hope you would have really enjoyed this video and would have found it extremely informative interesting do let me know about your feedback in the comment section and subscribe the channel if you would like to get updates more about such videos over on several other topics of psychology